Quincy McLaughlin, Associate Head of School and Head of the Upper School. This seems very loud. Is this okay? Is this okay? Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. This idea for doing this tonight actually grew out of um, a number of your good questions last year. I had the opportunity when I was new last year to meet with a number of um, families, particularly families that were growing from eight to nine. And um, here, if the, oh, yeah, what is that? Really? It's, there's no feedback here? Physics people on the stage, thank you. Um, so this idea grew out of last year when I met with a number of families who were trying to think about their choices in terms of eight to nine, nine to 10, 10 to 11 courses, what, what led to what um, in terms of our diploma requirements, but also some students and families have a very well-developed idea about their interests by then. So thank you actually to all of the parents and their good questions last year. And this is what informed the creation of the visual materials that we distributed as you entered the theater tonight. And our idea that we would get all of us together in one room. So you at least know who the resources are in the building for your questions as you continue on in your time here at Green Hills. Whenever I attend these parent events myself in my own parenting life, I always learn from other people's good questions. Inevitably, I also end up feeling a little anxious because somebody's worried about something that I'm not worried about. And then I'm worried, I'm worried about the wrong things. They had good questions and it didn't even occur to me to worry about that thing. Um, and I hope that that doesn't happen tonight. And in fact, what we do is reassure you a little bit and maybe even liberate you a little bit from some of your worries and questions and concerns about your students' choices through school. Alison Gopnik wrote a book a few years ago on parenting in modern America, and the title of the book was Gardeners and Carpenters. Carpenters, those of us that are parenting style carpenter, like to build a cabinet from a set of plans, and we imagine that if we make the right choices, that we might develop a certain type of adult that has a certain kind of outcome. Gardeners like to place their child in a nourishing, nurturing ecosystem and then just trust that the child will thrive regardless of the individual choices that they make and whatever their outcome becomes. I'm sure for most of us, we have features of both of those parenting styles. And one of the things that I really love about Green Hills is that I think that we make a lot of room for all of those parenting styles and student styles. So whether you're a gardener or a carpenter or a little bit of both, I hope you find what you need tonight. And I'm going to hand this all over, I think, to Dr. Dino Smith or Dean of Academics. And I'll see you in the dining hall in 25 minutes. Thank you, Quincy. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dino Smith. Uh, I'm the Dean of Academics here at Green Hills. Uh, but a number of you know me. Uh, have Having had my past year, I had the, the great benefit of having been the dean or uh, class principal of the 11th grade for a period of 10 years uh, prior to coming into the uh, dean of academics role. Uh, and that gave me a great opportunity to see the progression through the high school and in particular to take, you know, be very closely associated with juniors as they go through that, you know, intense period of, of their, you know, growth and development. The, the entire process is about growing and developing. And um, I think that we are here to help the students through it. Of course, that's one of the reasons that, that we're at Green Hills, that you're at Green Hills, because we have an entire team of people working on that. Uh, we have on stage a small part of that team. And uh, I'd like to um, have us introduce ourselves before we move into the program. Um, in the school, as you know, we have uh, great deans at every grade level working with your, your children, with stu our students. Uh, and they work with a team of advisors who also are looking after your student as well as their teachers. Uh, we also have uh, a college counseling department. And our college counseling department, uh, we have representatives here on stage, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the college counseling perspective as we go through the course of the evening. Uh, and we also have our chair of the math department because we have a lot of questions about math that we want to address. Thanks, Dino. My name is Betsy Ellsworth. I'm the director of college counseling here at Green Hills. And I come from 10 years of admission experience at Reed College, a little liberal arts and science college in Portland, Oregon, where Steve Jobs went to school, at least for a minute and a half. Um, and I have um, twin sons who are seniors. Um, so anybody who's asking me about my Christmas break, I say I have twin sons who are seniors. Um, 
And so, Josh. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Chester. I am the Associate Director of College Counseling in Green Hills. This is my third year here. Uh, before this, in a previous life, I experienced much more pleasant winters in North Carolina, uh, where I worked at Duke University in the admissions office, and I got tired of being a gatekeeper and making nine out of ten pe every nine out of ten people I interacted with unhappy. So I decided to come to this side of things and actually help me. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jonathan Schwartz. This is my tenth year at Green Hills. I started as a sixth grade English teacher. This is my seventh year in the head of middle school role. And I'm here tonight, actually, as part of my coming role. I'm in, the, I'm in the process of transitioning from being your friendly neighborhood head of middle school to your friendly neighborhood college counselor. And tonight I will be serving in the college counselor role. Hello, I'm Susan Beamish, the head of the math and computer science department. I've been teaching middle and upper school math classes a whole variety for 17 years, and this is my sixth year here at Green Hills. Thanks all. <coughs> We've completed our welcome introduction. Uh, so uh, what we want to do as we go through the course of the evening um, is I want to we want to spend some time talking about um, the way you choose your way through high school. There are all kinds of directions students can go, all kinds of opportunities, um, all kinds of courses to select here at Green Hills, and we want to help you think about that as you're moving forward. Um, we'll be getting the college counseling perspective, and so the college, a lot of the questions that, that parents and students ask is, what, what does this mean? Because I'm looking toward college and I want to make sure I make the absolute right decision. And we understand your concerns. We're here to help you through that. And our college counseling office in particular will be addressing some of those concerns. Um, and then, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Ms. Beamish is going to be here, or is here, um, to talk about particular considerations in mathematics. Not because we don't have all kinds of amazing things outside of mathematics, because we do. We have all kinds of other opportunities in our departments, and you'll be seeing those uh, out in the dining room. Uh, and you've already experienced them here at school. Um, but we get a lot of questions because the mathematics sequence is a little complex to navigate. Um, and so that's the direction we're going to go over the course of the night. We'll only take another um, 15 or so minutes in here, 15, 20 minutes, and then we're going to be going into the dining room, and in the dining room we'll have tables set up. So we'll have a table with the academic office, uh, we'll have a table with college counseling, and then each of our academic departments will have a table um, so you can go and ask your individual questions uh, and try and you know, look through those programs as you are interested. Starting off looking through the upper school curriculum, what do we have in the upper school? The question is one of breadth versus what we'll get to next. Um, all kinds of different breads in Ann Arbor, especially the Zingermans. Um, we have a lot of courses um, at Green Hills, and we have a lot of different areas where we have super experts in the field. We want you to take advantage of that. We want to make sure that as you're moving through the school, you're learning, your students, your children are learning a lot of things. Because my background is science and engineering. I can't imagine being able to do good engineering without having a little bit of knowledge of art. I teach a class called Earth Solar System Universe, and I work poetry into it, and I work music into it, and I think these things make our lives richer, and they really help us understand in this world where we're moving to needing to cross disciplinary boundaries. We're preparing for a future that we, we don't know what it's going to be like. And those kinds of skills and that kind of knowledge is important. To that end, we have requirements for graduation. And if you uh, take your attention to the sheet that you uh, got coming in, on the one side of that, the matrix side of that, um, it shows on the right hand side the graduation requirements for each department. So we have a certain set of graduation requirements to make sure that our students have a broad experience and get those kinds of insights that we want them to have as they go through their lives moving forward. Of course, there's also depth. And in my life, uh, former life as a nuclear submarine officer, I appreciate depth. Uh, I think that it's important. There are a lot of um, folks who are really interested in a particular area. And we have every year students who go really, really every year, every set of four years, students coming through high school, students who really go deeply into their fields, and that's fantastic. 
And you have the expertise here at Green Hills to do that. We really have experts in a lot of different areas um, to take advantage of. So that's the balance that we're looking for. Um, we're here um, to help you and your children work through this as we go over the course of their year. So um, they have guidance from a lot of people. They'll be working with their advisors. They'll be working with their teachers. They'll be working in 10th and 11th grade with college counseling, a little more on that in a moment. Um, and we're always here to help make decisions. Uh, so you don't have to, you don't have to remember any of this. We're here to help. Um, we're here a phone call away. If you're concerned about something, um, I want to make sure that you know that, that we're doing everything we can. We are your resource um, to work through this process. Um, in doing the, the planning, we look at first at where are they going? What, is, what are their interests? And sometimes they don't know, and that's great. That's fine. There are a lot of things out there. Um, but we will help them if they have a particular interest to make sure that they have a good way to move through that. Um, there's an important part of balancing the schedules. As 11th grade class principal or grade dean, a lot of times I'll see students who have taken in such a course load because they want to do everything, which is understandable. I, I love everything too. They want to do everything. They don't have enough time to really focus on getting a real understanding of subjects that are important to them. And there is a real balance there. And from my experience in higher education, I think we, we can recognize the importance of making sure that we are careful in that balance so we get a, a, a sufficient education in the topics we're covering and studying. Um, lastly, there are a lot of other things about high school. We want you to keep that in mind. Things that you remember about high school, things that make a difference in your life as the human being you become, uh, include extracurriculars and athletics, um, performing arts, um, and other work. In um, the way it will work for your children is they will be working in February with their advisors in their advisory. They will get their course selection sheets. All of the people that I mentioned will be helping them make those choices. And of course, we want you to be involved in that process as well. So the course selection sheets will come home. You'll have a chance to go over them with your children. Um, you, you'll be signing, yes, this is something that we all agree on. Um, and if you have questions at that point, the same team is here to help. Um, Typical schedule for the ninth grade, so I know that eighth grade parents moving this transition is especially um, uh, not challenging necessarily, but it's, it's a big step. It's an exciting step. Um, and so a typical ninth grade schedule, schedule gives some choices, but we give them a lot of guidance. So we'll have a biology class. They'll have a class we call Global Perspectives in History and Literature. You notice that's two class periods. B period meets at the same time on one day, that F period meets the other day. So it's two classes. Um, but they're together to give them an integrated and more rich experience. Um, they'll have a program called FRESH. FRESH is our program that helps ninth graders, new, new to the school or coming from our eighth grade, ninth graders coming in have a lot of big steps, both socially and academically. High school is a different environment. They're not used to it. Um, and so we help them in the FRESH program to navigate that. It also gives them supervised study time so that we can also help them learn to do good things and to make valuable use of their, of their time in school. Uh, wellness is also a required class. And then the three that we put in the mix, there's a math class, a language class, and those are determined by your previous experience. And we might fit an arts class in there. So that's ninth grade. As we move forward, 10, 11, or 12, it opens up a lot of opportunities. And those opportunities are detailed on the sheets that you have in front of you. I'll go over those. Um, but there are a lot of different things that they can do, and they start to have a lot more, um, a lot more opportunity to, to follow particular passions of theirs. On that note, I'd like to turn it over to our college counseling office to talk about that side of things. Kristen here. Um, so you've met the three counselors on the staff for college counseling, but one of our team members is unable to be here tonight, and that's Stephanie James. She's the administrative assistant for the office, but she's also the testing coordinator for Green Hills. So you will encounter Stephanie as you go through the college process. I feel that it's really important to let you know that you don't have to remember all of this. Um, you're going to get plenty of reminders as we go through things, and again, all of us are here to help. Uh, so what we're going to do is run through some perspectives that the college counseling team has about course selection, what high school should be like, and then we've got a series of frequently asked questions that we all receive um, that we're going to try to answer for you. All right. 
So, I, to the first point, I actually think that Dino said it really beautifully just a moment ago when he was saying that high school is about more than just the preparation for college. So, Green Hills is a college preparatory school. That's part of the reason that you send your kids here. We are very much aware of that. But at the same time, if students end up being so focused on college that that is all that they get out of their high school experience, then they miss out on so much enrichment, whether that is just the pleasure of learning in their classes, whether that is devoting time to their friends, or whether that is the opportunity to explore their interests outside of class with extracurricular activities. So our philosophy is that high school is going to be more than just that college preparation experience. Because what we don't want to happen is for those people to, you know, you set your sights on one college or set of colleges and then say it doesn't work out. You know, you, we don't want you to look back on that high school experience. We don't want students to look back on that and think that they were wasting their time because that's just absolutely not true. It's four years of a student's life and we want them to fully appreciate that and fully live that. So of course, once it comes time to talk about college, all of us in the College Counseling Office are here to support you and help you, and there will be a point along the way where you are going to have to start planning for college. And a lot of people ask me, is there a time that is too early to start planning for college? And the answer to that is yes, and I can give you an example. So when I was working in admissions, um, one of the times that I was preparing for a campus information session and had to welcome people to campus, um, I was standing in the lobby, and this woman walked in with a four-year-old in tow. <laughs> you can see where this is going. And I said, oh, hi, are you, is, are you here with a sibling? And the mother smiles and goes, oh, no, this, here, this, is, this is the one who's here for the presentation. You can never, you can never start learning about college too early. <laughs> and I said, yes, you can. <laughs> so uh, whether you are four or whether you are actually 14, there is time that is too early to be thinking about college. And so for most of our ninth graders, we think that ninth grade is not really the best time to start talking about college. So ninth grade is a time to adjust to the high school experience. It is a time to get used to the new academic expectations of the upper school. It is a time to get used to the new social conditions of the upper school as well, which is why we don't focus on college. We don't really talk about it, think about it, um, until starting in 10th grade. Betsy will talk more about that. Next is course selection. And the question that comes up a lot is, what courses should my child take throughout high school? And the answer is, your child should take courses that fit with his or her interests and ability level. Ascertaining interests is sometimes a more complicated one. Ability level comes through the lens of their own experience, your experience of their experience and through conversations they have with their teachers and department chairs and so on. And those conversations are ones we're so happy to have as you move forward. I thought I'd mention a word about interest through a hopefully illustrative example. I have two children. Um, the elder now is in elementary school and he wants to be a pediatrician when he grows up just like his favorite grandparent. And the younger wants to be the Incredible Hulk just like his favorite uh, radiation-exposed scientist turned superhero. And I think we expect the kids who are in elementary school will have interests that evolve, and they may not want to be, even in a few years, what they say they want to be now, and yet it may remain consistent. However, my experience has been that even five, six, seven years later, when those kids are teenagers, they do feel some pressure to know, and they feel some pressure to choose. And the truth is, they still don't have to know. They can follow their interests as they evolve. And one of the beauties of this program is that there's always so very much available to all of our students, and they can change their minds. And as their interests evolve, the school will seem to evolve with them and help them continue to I noticed that we're not using the clicker. Um, so families will begin to hear from the College Counseling Office in the second semester of sophomore year. Very deliberately, we do not talk about college in ninth grade. I think it's probably obvious as to why, based on what Josh 
and Dino and Jonathan have said, we really want ninth graders to focus on being ninth graders and get used to the school, start trying things. One of my children decided that they were gonna try theater and sing um, and loved that experience and we hope that students do those sorts of things. Um, and so in the middle of 10th grade year, we will start talking with you about the college process and the reason for that is the PSAT, which is this test that you will take, your student will take in 10th grade in October. More on that later. But in the middle of 10th grade, you'll start to hear from the College Counseling Office. Obviously, we're always available if you have questions, but we don't want your child focusing on that. Now I'll use the link. All right, so now we get to some of what we think, what we get as frequently asked questions. All right, now the clicker actually has a purpose. So, um, one of the most common questions that I would get when I was working in admissions was, should I get an A in a regular course or a B in an AP course? And similarly, how many APs do I need to take to get into a certain college? And I would want to challenge those questions and the premises of those questions because I don't think they're necessarily asking the right things. Um, because the answer is going to be different for absolutely everybody. And really what we want to emphasize is that students should focus on, as John can talk about, finding the appropriate level of challenge in an area of interest. Um, and so colleges also don't have a checklist where they sit there and go, hmm, you got, you know, if you'd only had five APs, then that would have been the thing that would have got you in, but you only had four. That, it, I can remember basically no time sitting in an admissions committee that that conversation happened. Now, it is important for students who are interested in a particular area to explore their interests, to deepen those, and to challenge themselves appropriately. Um, it is more appropriate for students to take more rigor in the area that they are interested in specifically, but there isn't some sort of magical formula where you can, you know, take the number of APs that you've gotten, multiply by your GPA, divide by your SAT score, and figure out where you're going to go to college. It just doesn't work that way. What extracurriculars, activities do colleges want to see? They want to see the ones that your children are interested in, is the short answer. And in general, colleges value depth over breadth. Really deep dives into things that they love. That said, that can also lead some students to think that they have to pick something and stick with it, and that's also just not the case. Here, there's also room for kids to evolve and to change their interests, to change their minds, and explore the things they love. Our hope is that middle school, upper school, and college are all steps along the path toward a fulfilling life. And one way to ensure that that can happen is to pick things that they enjoy and dive into them at this moment, on this day, at this time, in this year. And the way to do that is to use their interests as their guide. If they do that, they will naturally have a set of curriculum, extracurricular activities that they enjoy and that are good to report to colleges. Um, should I start ACT, SAT, chess prep in ninth grade or earlier? No. No, you shouldn't. Um, there's a lot to be said for developmental progress and the adolescent brain changes incredibly. Those of us who've watched our adolescents grow up, and I, there's some of you in the audience that I know. Um, and so, this is ringing. Um, we ask and suggest that once you take the PSAT in 10th grade, you take a practice ACT here with us for free, and we then look at those two test scores and make a decision about which test we think you are better suited for. And we then work with you to create test prep very specifically for that test as opposed to a scattershot approach. Um, so do not start test prep in ninth grade or earlier. Um, there are colleges that will not accept tests that are taken only in 10th grade. We had a student a couple of years ago who had a 36 ACT 
from 10th grade. Their college wouldn't accept it. So right now, at this time, that student was instead of focusing on second semester senior year, was restudying for the ACT. Um, it's just not worth it, all right? So no need to do that. All right, audience participation time. So if you knew what you wanted to major in in college when you were a freshman in high school, please raise your hand. Not many. How many of you changed your major while you were in college? Yes, a good deal. And how many of you are now in a field or a career or have worked in some field or career that was completely unrelated to your degree? Exactly. So that is why it is perfectly okay for a student right now to not know what they want to study in the future. Um, to quote uh, Richard Broadhead, who was the previous president of Duke University, he sounded a lot like a very knowledgeable Barney. Um, he said, if you know what you want to do with your life at age 22, and you do that when you are still 50, then you may be brilliant, but you are also probably very boring. So essentially what we want people to do is think about these things, help figure out what their interests are through exploring them, but also keep an open mind about them. Um, there are some cases, you know, it, this is a reasonable question to ask when picking courses. Uh, since some colleges do require uh, coursework in some particular areas, uh, particularly students in engine who are, know for sure that they want to study something in engineering will want to take calculus, you would want to plan for that appropriately, but interests change. The most important thing is to, again, stop me if you've heard this one before, dive into the things that really excite them and interest them and push themselves mostly in those areas. Okay, and the last of, of these is when should I start working on my application? And hopefully we're hitting on some of the questions that you have, sort of the big picture questions. We run a series of programs in junior year and then in the summer before senior year where we'll begin working on the application with your child. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, trust the process. Know that you have people here who are trustworthy. Two of us have actually worked at college admissions, so we've read those essays, we've made those decisions. Um, and one reason we both left, Josh said he didn't want to be a gatekeeper anymore. After 10 years of read, it was exactly the same. I wanted to come back to working with kids. And so what a great pleasure now to be on this side of the desk and actually really get to know your students through essays and through these conversations we have as we get to know them. We will work with them on their applications. Any of you who've, who've been in the junior forum will see that our offices are full of seniors all fall working on applications and essays. Um, we sometimes are the bad guy for parents a text message I get, is my kid working on their application? Have they written their essay? Um, we support them throughout the whole process and hopefully support you as well. And again, you don't have to remember all of this. And one last note about balance before we, we leave the college piece of this. Um, I mentioned earlier that Reed College is where Steve Jobs went for a minute and a half. Um, but Steve really believed in a broad-based education and actually went to a college that loved it when kids showed up with an undeclared major. And so the fonts that we have on our Macs come from Steve taking a calligraphy class at Reed, and that's what got his mind going about fonts and lettering, um, and spatial relationships and marketing and how things look came from a dance class he took at Reed. And so there's no better argument to support all of the things we're saying about breadth and depth and doing what you love because we don't know what the world's gonna look like in 10 years. You need to be agile. You need to be able to speak clearly, think quickly, look at things from multiple perspectives. That's what we're hoping that we're giving your children is a way to look at things that way. So we're now back to math, on to math. So we know that many of the questions that parents and students have about course selection revolve around math. And so I'm here just to give you a brief overview of the requirements and the choices that we offer and have in the math department. So generally, students take the path that you can see up on the screen. But our requirements are that all students at Green Hills take Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 
in the building sequentially during school years, um, where they start.